now that we know how to create a file with Python, we can continue with iterating through files. We have said that we can iterate through sequences. In sequences, the order of elements is important. We know that a string is a sequence of characters. So when we iterate through strings, we iterate character by character. We know that a list is a sequence of elements of a list. So when we iterate through lists, we iterate element by element. Files are also sequences. Files are sequences of lines. So when we iterate through files, we iterate line by line. To iterate line by line, we can say for line in open and state the name of the file, for example, spam.txt. However, it is possible to iterate through character by character in a file. We can do this by using the read method. So we can say for line in open spam.txt and then call the read method. This is a way to iterate character by character. To take the file spam.txt, we've already mentioned, and iterate through the file, we write for line in open, open round bracket, open quote spam.txt, close quote and close round bracket, and then colon. We can say print line from a file and then the actual line. And the program returns the text from the print statement and the line from the file. In this example, we are checking the data type of each line from the file. And we can see that each line is a string data type. And we know what function methods and operations we can call on strings. Next example shows how to count the lines in a file. We have a counter and we have to reset it to zero. We iterate through the file and instead of printing the content of each line like in a previous example, we increase the counter by one and assign the new value to the variable. When we print the counter, the program returns the value six, that is, our file has six lines. In the second example, we use condition in our for loop. We tell the program to check if the first character of the line is an uppercase letter T. If this condition is true, we tell the program to print the line. And the program printed two lines, starting with the name Terry, containing the uppercase letter T. This example checks if the second character of each line is a lowercase vowel. And if this condition is true, the program prints the line. As you can see, the program printed four out of six lines. We can also count the number of characters in each line with the function len. As you can see, the program returned the number of characters with the new lines. Do you remember what method used on strings removes white space if found at the beginning or the end of a string? Try adding that method to this for loop on the slide and see what happens. You should get the numbers from the slides decreased by one. Except, of course, one line. One line on the slide will have the same number. Which line is that and why? Let's see now how we can iterate through the content of the file character by character. We can do that by calling the method read on the file. The example on the slide shows only the first part of what the program returns. It returns each character from the spam.txt file in a separate line. Now that we know how to iterate through the contents of the file character by character, we can, for example, count the number of vowels in the file. First, we reset the counter to zero. 
Then we say for character in open spam.txt. Then we call the read method. And we call the lower method so that we don't miss the uppercase vowels. And then we state our condition in the next line. If the character is found in this string A E I O U, increase the counter by one and assign this new value to the variable. When we print the counter, the program returns value 24. Until now, we have dealt only with ASCII characters. But what about the non-ASCII characters found in texts? Even English contains characters not covered in the ASCII code page. We have already heard about Unicode. Well, we can also use the Unicode standard in Python. And Unicode is a new type of object we will cover in this lesson, as already announced at the beginning. Unicode objects act like strings. The same functions called on strings can be called on Unicodes. The same methods called on strings can be also called on Unicode. Python also supports other encodings. The link to the full list is provided on the slide. The main difference between strings and Unicode is that strings are a sequence of bytes, while Unicode is text. To designate that something is a Unicode, we have to write a letter U before the text in quotation marks. Let's look at a few examples. The first row of examples calculates the length of a string and a Unicode, naive. The length of the string is 6, while the length of the Unicode is 5, and we know that the word has 5 letters. Why is the string longer than the Unicode? Well, because the string uses 2 bytes to store the funny letter i in naive. When we count the i as 2 and the other letters as 1 byte, we get 6 bytes. On the other hand, the Unicode counts the characters, that is the text, and not how they are stored on a computer. In the second row of examples, you can see that the upper method called on the string does not convert the lowercase i to an uppercase i, while the same method called on the Unicode data type converted the letter correctly. You can see in the last row the two bytes the string uses to store the letter. Now we see that the write encoding is important. That's why we will cover two more methods that can be called on strings. The first one is the decode method and the second one is the encode method. The decode method is used when reading a file. It decodes a string using a codec. It takes one optional argument and, edit, and that is the encoding. The encoding contains the code for the codec. When this argument is left out, the program assumes the default codec, which will probably be the ASCII codec. However, we will mostly use the UTF-8 codec. For example, if we count the length of the German word for a user interface using the right codec, we will get the right value. You can find the file utf8.txt in the materials for this lesson. When we count the length of the file without the decoding, we get the value 51. But when we use the right encoding, the UTF-8 codec for decoding, we get the value 46, which is the correct answer. In this example, we have just calculated the length of every line for the same file to see the differences when no decoding method is used and when the method is used. The other method we will need is the encoding method. This method is used when writing to a file. It tells the program what codec to use when we write something to a file. It also takes one optional argument. 
In this argument, we will also usually have to set to the UDF-8 codec. We can of course use other encodings if we needed to, like in the example on the slide. We have taken the content of the utf8.txt file that is encoding using the utf8 codec and stored it to a variable named text underscore utf8. Then we have opened a new file named iso.txt and set the mode argument to write. Then we have taken the content of the first file that is associated with the variable txt underscore utf8 and wrote it to the new file, but this time using the encoding ISO 88592. We can check if the lengths of the files are the same without using the decoding method. The program returns false. And then we can check the same thing using the decoding method. The program returns now true. We have the same content but different encodings. We have covered iterating through files. We have covered another new object in Python and those are Unicode objects. And we have covered encoding methods that can be called on strings. Let's see some code. 